Hello back everyone! Today we're making elemental iodine from betadine. I know this is a classic video, but I wanted iodine anyway, so why not make a video as well, right? Let's take a look at the reagents needed to do this procedure. Of course we need a 10% betadine solution as an iodine source, but any other concentration or even iodine tincture will work. And then you need around 100 to 150 ml of 23% hydrochloric acid, around 30 grams of sodium monoxide, and finally hydrogen peroxide in any concentration. If you use a different concentration of reagents, be aware that you'll need to adapt the quantities required. We can't directly extract the iodine from the solution of betadine because it's actually trapped in the soluble complex of povidone and triiodine ion. It's done this way, otherwise the iodine will not be soluble enough in just plain water. The plan is to first separate the povidone polymer and make a sodium iodide solution, then precipitate elemental iodine by oxidation. To purify the crude iodine, we will also do some sort of distillation. So the first step is going to be separating this povidone polymer from the solution with a sodium hydroxide solution in water. We prepare the solution by dissolving 15 grams of solid NaOH in water. We should be careful because this is a very exothermic reaction. Also, most of the time one solution is not enough, so you will probably need to prepare the solution twice in advance. As you will see later, I needed a second solution to reach the end point. Then, we open the iodine bottle and empty it in a beaker if you have one, not like me. <laughs> we add our solution while stirring vigorously, and the end point of the solution is reached when the solution takes a light yellow color. This will mean there is no more complex iodine. Now, we let the solution cool to room temperature and then filter it. I first used a coffee filter, but the solution was too basic and dissolved the paper. So I changed it for a piece of cotton in the bottom of the funnel and that worked very well. The solution is now very clear compared to the old one. Also, why the fuck does the paint cracks every time? I swear, I always have to paint like 5 times because it just cracks and it's, it's ugly, you know, it's bad for the video. Anyways, the next step is to concentrate the solution by boiling off the water and some leftover polymer might precipitate right now. But that's normal and you can just remove it with a spoon or something, you know, what you have. Then we add hydrochloric acid until the solution turns brown or dark yellow. We can also check the pH and add until it's very acidic. In this step, multiple reactions happen at the same time forming sodium triiodide, elemental iodine and a small amount of hydroiodic acid. All of these products are competing in an equilibrium, but the color of the solution depends mostly on the iodine and sodium triiodide concentration, as they are the one giving the color. You might also have precipitate of salt if you added too much sodium hydroxide at the start. So if this happens, just filter everything and you'll be fine. Finally, we can precipitate elemental iodine by adding our hydrogen peroxide. Be careful to not add too much or else you will dissolve back the iodine in solution. If this happens, you can use a reducing agent like sodium metabisulfite to carefully precipitate the iodine back. The reaction is very exothermic, which can start to sublimate some iodine, but I think the purple vapor is really beautiful with the dark solution. It's kinda sad that it's somewhat toxic. Anyway, I used the lid to cap the container and avoid any loss in yield, but that didn't really help. To separate the solid iodine, we can this time use a coffee filter instead of a cotton one, since I found that coffee filters are quite resistant to acid, but the same cannot be said for bases. I've had my filters break numerous amount of times in the past, every time I use sodium hydroxide. Anyways, after filtering, we scrape the crude iodine and put it all in a beaker. I recommend scraping every little bit because the yield is often quite low. I don't really know why my iodine was so brown, but I guess that can happen due to impurities. Now we're going to do the distillation. It's technically not a sublimation because iodine melts around 114 degrees, contrary to popular belief. We first start to heat the beaker to divert most of the water remaining, but if you have time you can probably dry the iodine before this step. When you start to see iodine vapors, you can cover the beaker with a round glass filled with cold water to condense iodine crystals. When there are no more vapors produced, we can stop heating and scrape off the crystals of iodine. I don't know why, but I lost the footage of scraping the iodine, but it's nothing difficult. I just did it with my plastic spoons, as always, but the yellow I got is pretty bad. I put all the iodine in the sealed mini test tube. 
As you can see, the crystals are very dark and small, but it's okay since I will only have them as collection. I love the halogens, and here's my sample of bromine, sealed in an ampule. Maybe one day, I'll also make liquid chlorine and put it in an ampule, but right now, I don't have access to dry ice, so this project will have to wait. And you might ask, what about fluorine? <laughs> well, I don't want to die soon, so I won't make fluorine. Anyway, I store my allergens in this jar with protection in case anything goes wrong. Also, I wanted to mention that I have a Patreon, and if you'd like to see liquid chlorine ampule synthesis and much more behind the scenes, maybe take a look. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time for the nitric acid video!